Hey everyone, welcome to the Daily Word. I'm really glad that you've joined me. And for today's Daily Word, we're in Matthew chapter 12, and I'd like to share a good portion of our, our scripture today with you, uh, verses 38 to 50. And then let's let's talk just for a few minutes today about the, the danger of half repentance. So if you would, hear the word of the Lord. One day, some teachers of religious law and Pharisees came to Jesus and said, Teacher, we want you to show us a miraculous sign to prove your authority. But Jesus replied, Only an evil and an adulterous generation would demand a miraculous sign. But the only sign I will give them is the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was in the belly of the great fish for three days and three nights, so will the Son of Man be in the heart of the earth for three days and three nights. The people of Nineveh will stand up against this generation on Judgment Day and condemn it, for they repented of their sins at the preaching of Jonah. Now someone greater than Jonah is here, but you refuse to repent. The Queen of Sheba will also stand up against this generation on Judgment Day and condemn it, for she came from a distant land to hear the wisdom of Solomon. Now someone greater than Solomon is here, but you refuse to listen. When an evil spirit leaves a person, it goes into the desert, seeking rest, but finding none. Then it says, I will return to the person I came from. So it returns and finds its former home empty, swept, and in order. Then the spirit finds seven other spirits more evil than itself, and they all enter the person and live there. And so that person is worse off than before. That will be the experience of, that, of this generation. As Jesus was speaking to the crowd, his mother and brothers stood outside asking to speak to him. Someone told Jesus, your mother and your brothers are standing outside and they want to speak to you. Jesus asked, who is my mother? Who are my brothers? Then he pointed to his disciples and said, Look, these are my mother and brothers. Anyone who does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. Well, friends, Jesus had certainly done enough miracles to validate his ministry. And, and the religious leaders know that, of course. They, they're plotting to kill him at least partly based upon the fact that he healed someone. He did a miracle on the Sabbath. So they're not earnestly looking for confirmation of, uh, of their faith. That's not the issue. What they are doing is that they're, they're actually looking for a work by which they can accuse Jesus, by which they can undermine his, his ministry and discredit him. And, you, you know, think of... Uh, when they accuse him of casting out demons by the power of Satan, which is, is really absurd just on its face. But they, they are looking for any way they can to accuse and discredit him. Now, Jesus names here the sign that they will receive, that the world will receive, as the ultimate verification of Jesus' identity, of his authority, and, and of his mission the mission of salvation, and that is the resurrection. The story of Jonah really is a prefigurement of the resurrection of, of Jesus Christ. Uh, the, Jonah is in the belly of the whale three days, three nights, and, and it's, a, it's, it's a sort of a, of a death. He goes down into the depths, and, uh, and then Jesus points out that when, <laughs> when that great fish vomits Jonah up on the beach and he goes on into Nineveh, he begins to preach. They see this crazy guy covered in, you know, like fish vomit. And, and he just says, hey, you know, you guys are guilty. God's, God's about to bring judgment. You need to repent. And they do. And they do. And so you see these people who were considered uh, evil, wicked people. And, and in a lot of ways, they were. They were. But Jonah came to them, preached the word, and they repented. But now Jesus is here, one greater than Jonah, and they would not repent. Now, the, uh, the truth is that 
I, I think that it's fair to say, just to be fair to the religious leaders, right, that they, they did attempt in their daily life to, uh, to stay away from sin. They, uh, they, in a sense, did repent from sin uh, in, in a way, and partly, I think, that we would have to say. Because, yes, they, they tried to avoid sin, at least as they saw it, but they did not turn to God. Uh, in Matthew 4, 17, not too long ago, we read where Jesus began to preach. Listen, listen to his, his message. This is 4, 17. From then on, Jesus began to preach, repent of your sins and turn to God, for the kingdom of heaven is near. So you see these, these two parts. It's not enough just to to try to get sin out of your life. It's to repent, to turn from sin, and to God. And Jesus here in this passage actually points to the great danger of turning from sin, but not from God. Uh, and, and really, if we were going to describe this, what, what we would say, I think, are, are things like this, that, that this is about becoming religious without giving your heart to God. This is trying to be a good person without turning to God, without relying on God, not only for, for forgiveness, but for power, for the strength, for the grace to actually get sin out of our lives. We might, uh, we might be able on our own to get some sin for some time out of our lives, but what we find is that when we're not turning to God then, that the goal is still the self. The goal is to elevate the self, to justify the self, to, to in pride, declare ourselves self-righteous. So we leave ourselves then, Jesus shows here, open to a yet greater darkness to where, in this case, there is such darkness in their hearts that the Messiah is right there. The Messiah is right there, and they want to kill him, and they, they actually call the work of the Holy Spirit evil. On the other hand, what we see is that when we do turn from sin to God, when we invite Him into our hearts, when we yield to Him, when we seek to live for Him, Jesus says that we become as close to Him as family. This is verse 49 and 50. Then He pointed to His disciples and said, Look, these are my mother and brothers. Anyone who does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. The Lord promises us here in His Word closest relationship when we repent, turn from sin, and to God. Open your heart. Don't harden your heart to Him. Don't try to do this on your own. Don't try to justify yourself. Simply come before the Lord in humility. Receive His forgiveness. Soften your heart to receive Him. And He will draw you into closest relationship. He will call you family. And thanks be to God for that great grace. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And friends, till we have a chance to speak again, I pray that God would bless you and that He would keep you.